All right, well, let me say hello. Hello to you, and welcome to another weekly edition of Stock Market Mutterings. This is for the week that begins on October 21st. Doug here with the LincolnList.com, and this is where I'll do my very best, my very best to take a grope in the murkiness here. Try to make some sense out of this market. Try to share with you some of my trade ideas, a few setups, and I hope that puts a little bit of money in your pocket. Before we get started, if you need help with your trading, I'm going to post a link on the screen. It'll direct you to our live trade room. Also, I'm going to be doing a webinar here on Tuesday. I'm going to be talking about the three pillars of successful trading. I'm going to post a link right there. Register. It will not be available for playback, so be sure to attend. So we'll start out here talking about the market, and we got a little, a little crackage. A little crackage there on Friday. It was all over the place, which was somewhat expected. And again, what you're seeing here with the market, the overall theme, I know you've had a lot of noise over top of this over the last year with the trade wars, interest rates, QE, and all this other stuff being thrown at it. But every time that the SPY reaches that all pivotal 300, it gets rejected. So, so far since you can go back to the summer, Every time you get just slightly around 300 or just poke its head roughly above 300, you start to see some selling immediately after that or shortly after that. So right now, that's kind of like the, let's say, call it the psychological number in everyone's head. At some point, something's going to give. And when I say that, I mean you're either going to get that close above 300 and the market will continue to build on that throughout the last quarter and just show strength throughout the rest of the year, or you're going to get a significant rejection off of that, something a little bit more sustaining, maybe something like we saw back in, in August, but a little bit more profound. I don't know if it's going to go back to what we saw last year, but we're going to find out. I'll go through a few levels right here. Again, you kind of you moved up there pretty strong early in the week, and I thought that maybe around Wednesday that all-time highs might just get a whiff of it, but you pulled back again. You get around that 300, and, then, and, and rejection is right there. So if we start out the week, I would watch 300 again. It's like 300.33. If you start moving above that and you actually get a close above that, it would be hard not to think you're, you're just not going to squeak out all-time highs. I mean, that, that would just be the obvious, obvious. But the market's not always obvious, is it? So watch that number going up. As far as any kind of pressure downwards, I don't expect some sort of nasty spiraling out of control, massive mega correction sell-off, but possibly you get down into the moving averages, which is, let's say, the 10, 20, 50. They're all roughly clustered around the 295 spot. So not pinpoint to the penny here, but, you know, you're within that range right now where you're 295 to the lows, 300s to the highs. At some point, one of those will break, and you'll see probably a more exaggerated move. If you get under 295s, then you might start talking about testing the lows from uh, August or earlier, later in September, excuse me. And then if you get above 300, then maybe we're talking about some some strength there. That, that takes us back to all-time high. Again, stuck in this range right now. So when you're in these moments, the market's just kind of telling you that it's, it's taking a break, and it's going to make a break at some point. So watch those numbers going forward. Now, there's some interesting stock setups that we have, probably more interesting than we had lately. And I'm just going to share some thoughts here because the big – the big trade this week was Netflix, and it didn't come until later. It's just like I very rarely mess around with earnings plays on the first day, but this one just had that look and feel to it like it was going to sell off. It's really tough right now. I'm going to give you my overall thoughts, and then I'm going to give you my trade thoughts because the way I look at things in the future and how I trade in the immediate present are two different things. I think this stock, ultimately, by year's end, is going to start going back down towards 250 bucks. I mean, that's where this thing was, sitting around the lows. Netflix has always had a history of running up into earnings, so you get this big bounce from 253. You get this immediate knee-jerk reaction to earnings that goes up 300, and then it just starts getting smoked after that. Now, one thing, if you guys are aspiring traders or some traders that are learning out here, one thing that I notice, you know, technical analysis is one thing, but then sometimes it's, it's, it's what's actually happening in front of your eyes that means everything. When you have a stock that gaps up $20 on earnings, and especially a stock that's gotten its ass kicked for a long period of time like Netflix, and it just not, not just sells off or fades, I mean, it just gets smoked, taken out to the woodshed and beat down. When that happens, it's just like there's, there's no hope left for that stock. I mean, the catalyst is out now. All the stuff is on the table, and people are just bailing quickly. So whatever reasons are behind that, you can just... 
sift through all kinds of financials if you want, but you can just see it. You can just see it through the tape. You can see it through the action. And that's why we say price pays. You can tell from the vibe is like people want the hell out. So what I'm saying is this thing is most likely a short on every bounce in the immediate future. And at some point, you're probably going to see 250. Now, on the flip side of that, I'm not crazy enough to think that this thing just can't get an emergency upgrade by some fund that's underwater, or you're not going to get those one-off days where it just squirts up 10 to 15. That happens. I mean, even when Tesla was going down a lot, it happened to Tesla. They're not just going to bury themselves like this forever. They're going to attract dip buyers at some point. So when you're sitting here and you're looking at it now, it's already made a pretty extreme reversal. So it's going to have to kind of settle, I think, for a day or two. And then I, I think going forward, most spikes on this are going to provide nice shorting opportunities because by the end of the year, I would visually see this thing going back to two, 250 area and maybe even lower. But for the short term, there could be possible bounces and there could be nice nice shorts on spikes. Let's Let's watch this one. Overall, I'm bearish. But after you've retraced from 300 down to 275 in just a day and a half's worth of trading, you don't want to get really aggressive right here. There's a little bit of chart work that needs to be done on that one. But watch this one. One here that's also somewhat similar, we've been talking about this one for weeks, is, is Beyond. The big break from Beyond was right here at the 134.50s. It had held, if you look at this, when we talk about support and resistance and how valuable it is and how valuable it is to understand price action, you had like a quadruple bottom here going all the way back to the middle parts, early parts of the summer at this 135.50. You got in there on, on August and you tested it again in September, tested it again late in September, and then you just finally blew right through it. Now, they've got a share lockup coming in. I think it's later here in this month. And they also have earnings coming up later here this month. I really, when I first brought this up months ago, I really envisioned this it goes goes the way of Tilray. It's going to be a stock that's going to end up trading down in the 60s, maybe even the 50s. I've seen it with like Molly Corp and a ton of others. You've seen it with GoPro. They just get ahead of themselves. It doesn't mean they're going to go bankrupt and out of business, but it's way, way overvalued. So even if it's sold down to 80 from here, it's still overvalued from where it's, where it's sitting. So I, again, just like Netflix, I see much lower prices coming from this. Now, earnings could obviously be the wild card, but it's also not the first thing that you want to run into in short every day just because it's down a lot. you got to wait for the intraday setup for that. But I, I want to focus a little bit more on this because I would actually like to see a few day bounce to get get a better positioning on a short, maybe something that you could swing out. Now, you got to kind of somewhat feel like how how – how crazy that is for some of the people who had like these insider shares or maybe something like that. And they've watched this stock run all the way up to 200, 240 bucks in July. They had all this like paper millions and then they got this lockup coming. They're like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And the stock's just dumping and dumping. They're like, I can't get out of it fast enough. So it'll be interesting. At some point here, we're going to see how that earnings plays out along with a lockup. But I expect this stock to be far, far lower. Now let's kind of reverse this and look at a couple of longs. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to look at some of these software. These software was the was the key this week. Those those things got barbecued. I mean, literally hung out to dry and smoked. You saw this W day just get murdered. MDB, some of these stocks we've been talking about forever, even like Vive, Okta, Team, um, Twilo. Th these things just got absolutely spanked spanked and they're down a lot and some of them are approaching some areas that look somewhat attractive but i think in the case like this one we were just talking about a couple of days ago w day was 180 dollars uh, maybe it's time to look at these long you know again just like when you're looking at a short just because it's down a few days in a row doesn't mean that's the first move you're going to make on a monday morning you don't want to buy them first thing on a Monday morning either. You wouldn't want to chase gap ups just as you wouldn't want to chase gap downs. But you guys got to wait for your intraday setups. You got to look at overall theme is going to be bearish. Overall theme is going to be bullish. Where's the right point for me as the trader to enter where I can have the risk to reward that I need. And then if I am wrong on something like this, that minimal damage is done. That's how we come to all these conclusions. So I'm watching this one here for a long. Don't have any numbers on it. I don't know if it's quite ready yet, but I'll be watching it, especially early on in the week, to see if there's a bounce in W day. Now, Apple. I don't know what happened here. I don't. 
all of a sudden everybody wanted some apple this thing since august has just been relentless i mean it's just relentless since august i mean look at that chart and now you're sitting here flagging now we talked about this too with lulu here was another one i brought up actually in the webinar on a thursday i said man if this thing ever break, breaks range and this is the kind of moves you see out of these guys when they break multi time frames like this thing takes out 205 you just get this intraday rip and i think you know apple does the same thing on friday but as you're going through these market corrections i'm going to call them market corrections i'm really not but as you're going through these market pullbacks this choppy market there are some stocks that are standing above here and have been immune and this one i, I gotta say because of apple being the way it is being the way it's accumulated i realize it's up a lot already and could use a little deeper pullback but it's along over 238 if this thing goes over 238 it's a trade if you're a day trader you got to take this trade if the setup's there you got to take this trade because breaking those all-time highs you're probably going to get some chasing you're probably going to get some momentum in there and if nothing else it might be short term but there should there should be some money so kind of watch this one here now you could take the if things do get aggressive in the market as far as selling you could look at this as a, a, a short opportunity i mean i got a really tight range you can see i have them both up here 231 to the downsides 238s to the up just like when we discussed roku a couple of weeks ago when they're in that channel at some point it breaks it either breaks downward and gets aggressive it breaks upward and gets aggressive but when you have these multi-time frame breakouts and breakdowns that's when you see the biggest moves i'm leaning to the side of bullishness at least until this one gets to earnings provided any downgrades and when I look at these, I don't necessarily want to chase them. Well, I don't like to chase them at high of day. But I look for like intraday pullbacks like this right here where you get some fades and you have it right in here to support. And then if you take a look real close, like right here at this candle, you've got a, a wick, just a wick right here on the bottom on this one. Just when you see something like that, letting you know that the market's interested in holding that support for the short term makes a great trade because you can take this thing roughly like today here 234.60s stop 234s you got 60 cents max in this trade if you're wrong so you don't have a lot in it and then you know sometimes you'll get these in this case three dollar rips four dollar rips and stuff like that you don't always get them they're not always this strong and this directional but that's the theory behind trading you're getting down here you're not buying it up here and allowing it to fade on you becoming extremely stressful and possibly stopping out from frustration and anger and then having this thing come back and now you're even more frustrated and even more angry so kind of watch that quick review pay attention to those levels on the market 295 to the downs 300s to the ups if we could close above 300 i would consider that to be relatively bullish but right now that's just not been happening netflix is short on bounces beyond is a short on bounces w day possible long apple possible long maybe even lulu so anyway guys again don't forget about the webinar that i'm hosting on tuesday it's going to be a great time i'm going to put the link down in the description box if you need help with your trading visit the link list.com if you have any tips concerns questions support at the feel free to send me an email trade them well until next week take care i'll talk to you then